Uh, due to our um, time frame, we do need to be done by about 9 o'clock tonight. So uh, I'd like to table the uh, approval of the minutes. And I'd like to go right into a five to seven minute presentation from, <laughs> uh, from one planet. And um, David, I definitely appreciate what you're going to show us, but also be conscious of our time frame.
Yes. Hi, Carl. Hi, Carl. Is it working? Carl, yes, it's working. Um, Carrie, Carrie McDonald is just in the middle of a presentation. Um, okay. Can you let why don't you talk and see if Carl, see if you can hear her.
do that anymore. Uh, it's, it's the best space that any of our sites have, and it's something that we were applauded for. Sure. Um, so I think that's
Some people like to look at the common level of appraisal of the CLA as saying it's increasing our taxes. And this simple model here is an attempt to show you that the CLA does not raise the amount, the amount of taxes, the dollars that you pay, by one penny or decrease them by one penny. It simply equalizes between towns. And I, I can go into whatever detail you want, but I'll stop at this point for now. Here's a very simple example of two properties in the same town in the market rate there at $200,000. One is on the grand list at 160, the other, at the other grand list of the other town at 240, and they will pay the same tax. Their, tax, their homestead tax rate will be different, but because their value on the grand list is higher or lower than the market, it equalizes it out. So you don't get a town saying, well, we'll keep our grand list so we don't, so we don't pay so many taxes. So that's what equalization means. It means that it doesn't matter what, what your grand list looks like, you'll pay the same amount of taxes because the state says the CLA, the common level of appraisal, which is this column here, at 80% would be an example of a property in this town. The market value was 200,000, but on the grand list it was 160, so the CLA would be 0.8, 80%. So you divide the equalized tax rate by the, the less than one and you get a higher homestead tax rate so it goes up from it goes up from $1.47 to $1.83 for the homestead tax rate, but it still produces the same $2,942 inside town A and between town A and town B. So that's what equalization of tax rate means. And I'm going to stop there. I'll come back. I will next go to well, I'll just go very briefly to the tuition revenue. Since the last time uh, I presented on this. I have worked with people, the registrars in our schools to identify specific students that are presently being tuitioned into our schools, both into Rochester and into Stockbridge, and to look at where they might be going to school next year. Some of the pre-K students are expected to graduate and move into kindergarten, but not all of them. So those that are expected to go in are, are showing up under, under, the, under the section here. Uh, so these were a couple of uh, three pre-K students in, in uh, Rochester who are now in the next year looking at being kindergarten students. So we graduated the class, like we do all the grades, we move them up one grade for the next year, assuming that everything pass. Um, so that's what I've done. I worked on the tuition revenue coming into, in this case, Rochester, and further down the page, it's done the same for Stockbridge. And I also made a provision here because there was uh, some of the communication from board members was that they would like to have an opportunity to be able to increase that revenue by making assumptions about being more students coming in. Because what this does, it only takes the existing students. It doesn't anticipate an incoming class. So if the board wants to take a, a chance on that, and they have some knowledge or some insight, some understanding, or want to take a chance, we can drop those numbers in and it will run through the whole system. That's what I understood the board wanted. So that's the, the revenue from tuition. Students coming from other towns. Uh, into Stockbridge, it's mainly from Pittsfield. Students from Pittsfield, we had a number of them this year. Um, we are expecting there to be one first grade, well, one, one uh, two kindergarten, one first grade, two fifth grade, and one sixth grade coming from Pittsfield into Stockbridge next year, just as an example. They were in one grade less in the current year, so we're expecting that they will be in the next grade the next year. That's the same all the way through. And so a student who last year we might have got around three thousand dollars per student from the town of sending the sending the town in the Pittsburgh situation, or in this case Bethel. Next year we'll be getting fifteen thousand. That's the announced tuition for kindergarten for the Stockbridge school. And which is the same as the announced tuition for Rochester School same because it's a, the, the, the tuition rate is set by the district, not by the school. So the fact that the two schools in the same district means they have the same tuition rate. So that's the revenue from tuition and then the expense of tuition. So we, we send all our students, in secondary students, seventh grade through twelfth grade, out to other districts to receive their instruction. And there was a, a change here where one board member felt that there, there was another student that hadn't been counted. So that student was put in. I wasn't going to contest any board members of you on that. And so that number is in there. So there is a six students in, in here in, in Rochester that is in, in sixth grade this year that we're not paying for. 
But next year, when they were in seventh grade, we're expecting to pay for it according to the law. So that's, that's in there. Then I'm going to go next to the, the tax rates sheet, because this is very complex, and it's, it's the most complex of any of the districts that we have. And I'll explain some, some of the complexities. The, the, the simple process is you take your total expenditures, which at the present time are $4.328 million. Um, and this is the space in which we can take board input to say what changes we want to make to the budget. So we can take 100000 or add 100000 and this in the green cell there to the right. And this one here. And, and it will come into that cell. And everything else will recalculate. So you'll see the impact of making any changes. The board wouldn't have an option for tonight. And it's here. Second thing I would say is that the simple, the simple formula without any changes to the expenditure of the revenues is you take the total expenditures, look at revenues which are offsetting those expenditures. And those can be tuition income, can be interest income, we might have a small amount of interest. Could be rental income if we rent out the building to uh, young men's basketball league or whatever it is. Um, or it could be certain state grants such as the small schools grants or transportation aid, there's a variety of offsetting revenues. Once the, all those are counted and those are taken away from the total expenditures, what's left is the education spending amount, and that's the amount which drives the tax rate. So if we suddenly had a, a grant of $10 million from the, from the Gates Foundation, and we received it as revenue and we spent it in the same year, it would not affect our tax rate one bit because the tax rate is not dependent on our expenditures or on our revenues, but the difference between them. So if we add $10, $10 million or $10,000 or $10 to the expenditures and to the revenues, it doesn't impact the education spending, it doesn't impact the tax rate. So some people worry that if we, if we get more revenue, we're going to, it's going to change our tax rate, not if we spend it. So that's, that's, that's the general thing which applies to all budgets and all districts. We then divide that number by the number of equalized pupils. Uh, which is a, a way that the state counts students for the purposes of tax calculation only. So only, only time that equalized pupils are used. And some people who, who are, find this so strange say, I've never seen an equalized pupil. I can see Paul and Mary and John, but I can't see an equalized pupil. What's that? It's a mathematical tool which the state uses to recognize that certain kinds of students cost more to educate. So if you had a secondary student, they get weighted more, and so that the equalized pupil, if you lose a lot, if you lose 100 secondary students, your equalized pupil gap count goes down much faster than if you lose 100 elementary students. And that's the situation that's happened in Rochester. So one of the things that we're going to be looking at is the impact of that on the small schools grant. Small school grant has plummeted since the last time you looked at that. We'll, we'll get to that in time. But that's, that's the equalized pupil. So then you get the education spending for, for equalized pupil. And this year, it's based on what's in the budget, it's $18,532, which is quite a high number. It's a very high number. And it compares unfavorably to the excess spending threshold. The excess spending threshold is a number that's a percentage of the average spending in the state, which the state calculates and announces every year in advance, it changes from year to year. It's the number of which once you spend more than that per equalized pupil, you pay double the taxes. You pay, you potentially pay double um, your, your uh, let me show you an example here. So our education spending for equalized people is $716 above the excess spending threshold. So we add that 716 not only to get to the 18532, which we, is what we calculated, but to another 716 on top of that. So that's where the double taxation comes. So that's the impact of the excess spending threshold. So we have to add 716, which is the difference between that one and that one, to that one, so we get it twice in there. So our actual equalized residential, uh, actual spending per, per equalized people is 19,000 with that penalty included, which is very, very high. Um, we then have, so that's, that's our, so then we, that equal spending for equalized people gives us an equalized residential tax rate, which is the beginning stage before the merger, then after the merger, we, we get eight cents reduction because we merged. 
So that tax rate, the, the spending by the equalized pupils plus the penalty, uh, we get the equal, equalized tax rate of $1.95. We take eight cents off that, so that was $1.87. That's what we calculate. But we, we don't land there. We have to keep on we have to keep on working with that number because there's another law which says that as a result of the merger and as a result of getting an eight cent tax benefit from from a merging, we cannot by doing that have a drop of more than five percent from the prior year's equalized tax rate or an increase of more than five percent. So that's what the next piece down here says. What is five percent of the prior year? It's eight cents. And so add eight cents to the prior year, because I'll just show you it's in the years if you have enough space on the screen. So the equalized tax rate in fiscal year 18 for Rochester for the current year was $1.62. We add eight cents to that, comes to $1.70. So in Rochester, the tax rate that our budget will generate must be between the maximum, 5% more than last year's equalized tax rate, or 5% lower, so in that range. It must be between $1.70 and $1.54. If we come up with a tax rate more than $1.70, it, it falls back to $1.70. That's the highest we can go. If our tax rate from the budget goes below $1.54, it can't go below. It must, it must be brought to $1.54. So it's in that range. We're forced to get in that range in order to get the $0.08 cent, uh, tax advantage up here, the incentive for the merger. So what, what this, where the budget is right now, and I, I'm sure that there's some things that are going to happen tonight, is that the tax rate is pegged at the at the, the outer ranges of the two prior districts. I'll uh, show you this so you can see more on my face. This is Rochester and over here at Stockbridge. Let's see if I can do this. smaller, but you can at least see it all on one page. So when we look at Rochester's situation, the range has between $1.54 and $1.70. Over in Stockbridge, it's also $1.54, a little bit different, but not very much different, and $1.70, a little bit different, but not very much different. So basically, the, the lowest it can be is the lowest, the lower of these two, which would be $1.54, 52 and the highest it can be $1.70, 78 or $1.70, 88 so it can't be higher than this one. So with a unified district, you don't have only one rate, so it has to, be, it has to meet the requirements for both former districts. So what this means is that right now, the equalized tax rate is coming out at $1.70, with $1.70 and 78 cents, by 78 uh, percentage points. The CLA in Rochester is 114%, so the homestead tax rate is $1.49.48, which compared to the prior years, Homestead tax rate, the current one, is 4.72 4 cents on the, on the uh, on hundred thousand dollars on hundred thousand dollars on ten thousand on hundred on hundred dollars of appraised value. It's four point seven cents. That's what that is. And over here in Stockbridge, it's three point seven seven cents. So that's where things stand at the moment. Uh, I will then move you to the revenue, which is another place where there's some significant surprises. Screen. The computer has this kind of a shape, and the screen up there is a, a different kind of a shape, so I'm going to keep reading the next very side of the Stockbridge, 
all the other things besides the gems to export grants. Uh, so it, from the revenue sheets over here, this is the amount of K6 tuition, and this is the amount of pre-K tuition for Rochester and for Stockbridge, respectively. So these are not numbers that are sucked out of the air. They're represented by actual bodies of students that have been coming and are expected to come next year to our schools. Um, nominal amount of interest, uh, small amount of rental income. Um, E-rate grant money is some money that we, we earn by investing in technology. So it, it ch the rules change from year to year, but basically if you invest in internet access or, or network uh, capabilities or something like that, uh, you, get, you get a very high percentage, as much as 80% or more comes back. So if you're spending $1,000, you might, it might, you might get $800 back. It's a very effective program. And we're expecting to get a total of $3,000 in the district next year. Coming on down is the federal grants, the, the Title I school-wide program grant. We're expecting 73,000 between the two schools next year. This is money that the federal government uh, contributes, has contributed. We don't know what it's going to do for next year. The numbers aren't out yet. Um, we, may, we may get them in May. We may not get them in May. Um, but we hope to get them in by the end of June because we typically spend money on the programs during the summer. And so we don't have the money from the federal government, we won't be able to have some of our summer activities or even the end of the school year. So that's one source that is up for grabs. A lot of what's happening in Washington these days is impacting those kind of monies. There are two numbers here which combine total of these two together equal the education spending grant. Um, the, the bottom of the two numbers is the amount of our, of our money that we have earned that gets sent by the state to the tech centers throughout the state, typically where our students go, but it could be anywhere, to give them some kind of cash flow in the summer until they send out their tuition bills and can get rid of you in. But it's our money, it's not an additional grant, it's part of our education spending grant. And the, the balance of our education spending grant, which is a larger portion, so you can see it's 3.3 million to 56,000, that 3.3 million would be whatever we say we want to have. They will give it to us. They will charge us a tax rate to get it. But we can we could have $10 million in there, and they would give us $10 million. You might have a few emails coming back and forth. Do you really mean $10 million or do you mean one, one million? <laughs> so they will query it. It's unusual. But the, the law says that whatever the voters decide, the education spending money will be, that's what the grant is that the state is on the hook for. And so they then establish the tax rate to make sure that the education fund of the state has enough money in it to pay out all the education grants, spending grants money across all the districts of the state. There's a small schools grant, which for Stockbridge is not that different from the prior year. It's very similar because circumstances haven't changed a lot. Not a lot, they've changed, but not a lot in Stockbridge. But in Rochester, by getting rid of the high school, that brings the size of the small schools grant dramatically because the small schools grant is made up of three things. Now we'll jump back so you can see the formula. So you can see up in this cell, this is where the formula shows up for the small schools grant in, in, uh, in Stockbridge. So what it says is that there are 49 students who are part of this program. And there's a factor which, which is related to the, uh, the average size, class size. So if you have a if you have a smaller or a larger class size, that factor will vary. So if we were to go to the, the cell right next to it, which would be right, so you can see that the little factor is not 0.19, but more like 0.1. So that means that the class size is considered more unfavorable in Stockbridge, so there's a higher, larger grant to support it, to help to make it, to bring the size of the classes to a, a, a closer similarity across, across the districts and across the state. And then the last piece, the 8567, is 87% of the basic education amount, which is the number the state creates. So when Stockbridge has a very similar number of students to what it had last year, and a similar number of grades that it's offering, so the class size is about the same, it means the small schools grades to be about the same. But for Rochester, where they are no longer have the high school students, um, we see that their, their number of students brings a much smaller amount of small schools grant money. So I just wanted to explain that. Transportation aid is a number that the state uh, is committed to giving to 
schools in fiscal year 19. How do we know how much it's going to be? Let's take a look at what we reported we spent in fiscal year 17. That's two years before. And if we spent $100,000 on getting students from home to school and back home, not for field trips, not for athletic trips, not for any other kind of trips, no school to work kind of trips, none of those kinds of trips, just home to school and back. There's a formula which is applied to that cost. So if we spend $100,000 in fiscal 17, we multiply that by about 40% of that, and we'll get that money back in fiscal 19. So two years later, we get about 40% of what we spent two years earlier. That's, that's one of the grants that we get. And it's across the state. We don't, not, not many districts get federal grants directly anymore. Most of them are through the supervised union subgranted, and that's why the Title I, even though the source is federal, it comes through supervised union, it's subgranted. And we have all the subgranting responsibilities that the state has in getting to the supervised union. So, the bottom, bottom line is that our revenues come out, surprise, surprise, the same as our expenditures, because we have to have the revenues and the expenditures the same kind of balanced budget. So that's what it, you see here in this budget being presented today. And the, the way in which it's balanced out is the general state support grant. So whatever our total expenditures are, we take off our offsetting revenues, and that is that remain, the remaining amount is what the state will give us. So that's how this works. Now, at the bottom of this, you can see that there's various calculations which show uh, down to this cell, that's the excess spending threshold. So if our spending per pupil is above that, we pay double. If it's below that, we just pay whatever the spending per pupil is when it comes to <coughs> tax rate. Uh, and over here, there was an interest in seeing what the impact was on, on each of the former separate districts when we get to the 19 of the former districts. Um, and so these were the education, these are the education spending amounts. They're in, they're in italics because they're a kind of an artificial number. They don't really mean very much, but people want to see what they look like anyway. So that's why they're here. So that's the revenue side. The expenditure side, there are various changes that are being introduced in here. One of the changes that was introduced earlier early on in the, in the period between the last meeting and this meeting was at the request of the board to provide some money for <coughs> inter-school programming. So now that we have the opportunity for the music group here, the music group there to get together and, and form a big chorus or whatever it is, um, get some money in this. Some money is in there for that. And then there's another type that was added just today, which is for special programs. So the question was asked by a board member, can we have something in there? So this is a placeholder. I'm sure the board will discuss whether they want to have the same, less, or whatever. So there's two kinds of things in here. One was an original amount of, of inter-school programming, which was based on how did the number come about? Number 3,000 came about, thinking about $300 for an event. We get somebody to come in and spend a morning with the kids as an artist in residence or something like that. Um, or if we wanted the kids together to do something, that was a number that, that is uh, a reasonable number for many kinds of work. Not everything, but for many things, so it was a working, a working number. And in this one, there's, of course, a form of something like that. There's something like 20, 20 events for each district, each, each school, and each district, each school uh, throughout the year. So that would be uh, like two a month, something like that. So that's provided again. If the board wants to keep it in, it can be able to maybe change any other number. So that's that's those are two things that have changed since the last time you saw it. Um, more work has been done on making sure that we have all the employees in here. Um, our educator had not been brought into the budget. Some one of the board members noticed that, and that was put in here. They were we, we were checking out on the five minutes. Five minutes, okay. So if I stop going through that, there was a request, I'll, I'll mention in passing, that there was a request to look at what, would, what are the savings and utilities at, at, in Rochester for not having a high school there. Some research was done on the bills for this year, and a projection was done for this year, for the rest of the year, and then that was extrapolated into next year. And so those numbers are also, also in here can be further expanded as, as you wish. Um, down at the bottom of the budget, uh, the 
expenditure side of the budget, you can see that the last year the expenditure budget was $4.6 million. The two districts, when they were this year, meaning this year, we're talking about next, next year as being, we're there already, but we're not there yet. We talked about last year as meaning this will be easier than the current year. Our budgets, our total expenditures were $4.6 million. With the budget that we have here, it is 313000 less than the combined budget last year. So although the tax rate is way up there, uh, spending is way down there, even with all these things that are added in. And if you, uh, if you want to look over here and you, and you see, because not only have our expense, expenses changed, but our number of students have changed. So by losing the high school students in Rochester, um, we, we haven't lost the best of our life that we're very serious. Um, what comes out here, and I'll just wrap up now, is that the change in spending for equalized pupil is, is in the 20% range. So even though we are spending less, we have fewer equalized pupils. And so the, the, the uh, spending for equalized pupil uh, is very, very high at 17 or 17%, yeah, 17 17.5, 17 17.4%. So down with that. Yes. I mean, I how much in Rochester did these small schools get drop to what it is now? Well, the the small schools now is 81,000. Was it 123 or something? 150. 150. Just almost a half.
So you have to vote in May on the, on the budget. That is what our original is, plan is, yes. Oh, okay. This is why we're saying. I thought we voted next week on the 24th. We had already changed that. Oh, okay, because I saw that in the paper. No, that has already been changed. changed. But I didn't see any warnings anywhere in town. We haven't, it hasn't been warned yet. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're literally going to look over the wording of the warning to get it out. Okay. But now with these changes, we're not sure. It's around the area, and it's somewhere around it's just one dollar. Uh, three cent increase. Three, three, almost four cents. 
what, what, what are the, and there's a couple things to answer then. What's, what's going to be different next week? Or even next well, week? So, so we face this in, uh, in, in Tunbridge and in Chelsea. Um, Drew, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but this is not about the problem in Tunbridge and Chelsea. This is about the problem for the service. It's about the problem for the service. I am very, I, I understand that our budget was late because the best one was the problem. I understand that you've been covering for a principal shift in, in a number of different districts with a special up of serious distress. But this is not the time to be telling us how there's other people. You need to tell us what you can do for us. Oh. That I'm going to tell you if you let me finish. Okay. The, the, the idea the idea of continuing to work this budget uh, or even a number you can always change from the floor you can go in and say the number is different and we'd like you to vote on this new number on the floor the problem is people are going to panic when they see some of these numbers in the meantime you know? yeah that's not happening and so we can we can push the data out a little farther and work some more uh, not much farther, but uh, you know we need because we need the 30 days, and you want to be able to make sure that if you have a problem, you can come back for a second vote. So um, we could actually warrant the three. Uh, you can warrant what you have three, up here. 3.2 million that is under the threshold, even though that's not what is presented to us in front of us here now. Mm -hmm. You could warrant that. You could warrant that, and you and could come, and then you could work for the next month until until it's time to vote to get to where that is, and if, whatever you're comfortable with. And if we, yeah. I mean, I is that kind of No. We're going to have a lot of questions from the floor and a lot of bickering. Yeah. Well, we, we've got to figure this out tonight. I mean, this is really got very little time, and, and, and this is something that the board really has to take into consideration. Well, it's not right that last week we had a budget that was $300,000 less because the spreadsheet here. That's not fair to anybody. It's not fair to the board. It's not fair to the communities. So, so we need. We have a half an hour. What are we going to do? Are we going to are we going to go ahead with this date? Right, fifteen. Is that May fifteen? So we have to be, which we may have to be one. We have to be one by tomorrow. I thought it was Sunday, but that could have been our previous one. Yeah, I guess you're right. But by Sunday, it has to be one by Sunday. Or are we going to push it out one more week to May 22nd? Um, I mean, um, what do we think we can get accomplished in a week, and do we want to take on Carl's?
when we are we going to be able to work in this next week to, to brainstorm and cut? Well, we've got the yeah, we've got to okay. just. Is, by pushing it one week, does that give us enough? Are we good? Are we able to? Well, I think we got to go week by week. I mean, we got to see what we can get. Yeah, I think we got to see how far we can get in a week, and then and then we, uh, you know, hopefully. And once again next week, if we are able to go next week, yeah.
rather have sound panels in this multi-purpose room that they could change yes. around. Yeah. 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 So it's a similar expense. Uh, who knows if it's, uh, we've gotten some, so yeah, we it's just got similar, sent to us. It'd be a similar expense to the, the annual bond payment. Yeah. Um, on, you know, as I understood it, as I recall, the contract, you just can't see the fine. No, he loves it. He loves it. He's cold. 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 He's
Let's move on. <laughs> Just sort of migrating to this, like it's normal. This is a normal. So, so is it in light of... 
what Rob is suggesting. Let's say, Carl, let's say, Carl. So in, in light of what Rob's saying, we can buy some more time and go for one vote. We do have time to study and get some more information and go for one vote. You wouldn't you'd be able to do it so that we could make the June 30 deadline. But we wouldn't have a chance to. We wouldn't have a chance to go back. So it's, if it gets voted down. You have to ask for what happened. put deadlines on a budget that we needed and it got mailed to us, you know, that day, you know. I mean Jimmy saw it. I know it's just I, I don't I want more time, but I just don't know if by opening it up to more time that we're really gonna be able to be focused and have get the support that we need to get this done in a timely fashion, not just oh we can do that later. There, there, that's not the fire it's well, I
consequences are of, of pushing it out and yeah. that it's been done before. Um, so we, we've got our work cut out for us. I suggest um, uh, a great personal sacrifice. Uh, we do it Tuesday night. Um, and that gives you Monday, Carl, if you say, to go to the office and, and hash things through. And I think that was, that Can we have that meeting in Rochester? Because the Rochester School Board is meeting at 5.30 that night. So.